Good morning, it's Monday, August 26th, and over the past couple of days, Israel has been getting it on both sides, because Israel and Lebanon's Hezbollah on Sunday launched their heaviest exchange of fire after months of strikes and counter-strikes, just raising the fears that there will be an all-out war that could potentially involve the United States and Iran and other militant groups across that region of the world. So by mid-morning, it appeared that the exchange of fire had ended with both sides, Israel and Lebanon, saying they only had aimed at military targets. And the Lebanese authorities said Israeli strikes killed three people, while there were no reports on the Israeli side. And the situation continues to remain tense. And this is a look at what could possibly happen. This is a view of the way things stand right now. Israel says around 100 warplanes launched airstrikes targeting thousands of rocket launches across southern Lebanon in an order to stop an imminent Hezbollah attack. And then Hezbollah says it launched hundreds of rockets and drones aimed at Israeli military bases and missile defense systems in the north. And that Israel had annexed the Golan Heights and they aimed at that too. And Hezbollah called the attack the initial response to the targeted killing of one of its bound members and top commander Fuad Shukar that was an Israeli airstrike on Beirut last month that killed this guy and it started the first stage of this attack that caused Hezbollah to launch missiles deeper into Israel and Hezbollah went to say that its military operations Sunday were concluded and it denied Israel's claims to have thwarted the attack. Hezbollah wants to know and tell the world that they were successful in attacking Israel. They are proud of the fact that they were able to get in a position to attack Israel. And they have no reason to stop. So we have Israel caught in the middle between Hezbollah and Hamas and Iran and many others in that region that do not want them to exist. Now I fear that this could be the start of an all-out war between Israel and Hezbollah. This exchange of fire does not appear to have set off a long feared war. But the tensions remain very high there. And I'm thinking that in the blink of an eye something could happen that could change the entire situation. And that would be a disaster for Israel. Surrounded by nothing but enemies. How? How in the world can that small nation continue to exist? There has to be some way, shape, or form to get their neighbors to recognize the fact that Israel is a good country. They are prepared to do many, many things for the world. 
They have produced more Nobel Prize winners than not everybody, every other country in that region. Israel is not an evil country, but for some reason, the Jew has always been the enemy. And I do not understand why, why we can be considered enemy when we have contributed much to civilization for as long as we have existed. And we have existed much longer than most of these other civilizations. So we have Hamas and Hezbollah who are allies and backed by Iran. And they are sitting there continually waiting to kill Israelis, to attack, to fire rockets. And they are claiming that they are doing this in defense of the Palestinians. When in reality, Israel set the Palestinians free in 2005, and they did nothing with their freedom except create Hamas, allow Hamas to take their country over. And so Israel is forced into this terrible situation of having to respond to airstrikes on a daily basis. And those airstrikes have escalated in recent months. More than 500 people have been killed in Lebanon by airstrikes since October 8th. Most of them fighters for Hezbollah and other armed groups. But also more than 100 civilians have been caught in this, in the crossfire, I'll call it. And in northern Israel, 23 soldiers and 26 civilians have been killed by strikes from Lebanon. And this continues to go on and on and the world does not know about the deaths and everything because it has not really been publicized to any great extent and yet the world will not come to israel's aid and the un is worthless so is this what's going to continue until something really disastrous happens what happens when some nuclear device is unleashed and hundreds of thousands of people are affected by that. And right now we have tens of thousands of people who have been displaced on both sides of the Israeli-Lebanon border. So are we looking at a never-ending situation? I fear that it will come to some end, some terrible end at some point in time. And Israel has vowed to bring quiet to the border to allow its citizens to return home. And that vow will cause continued battles, I am sure. So I see a never-ending situation here, much to my regret. And I don't know that the world is prepared to step in and stand up for Israel's right to exist. So I leave you with that terrible situation this morning. Have a great day if you can. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.